Hey everybody, it's Kneecap here, and in this video I will be going through the 8.3 patch notes, the official Blizzard patch notes. Um, full disclosure, I will be somewhat reading off notes, I also will not be going over each individual class's changes, uh, you know, by each change in general or whatever. Uh, there's not a ton of changes anyways, I will just redirect you or just direct you to uh, where I got the patch notes from, and I'll put that in the link below. Uh, let's go ahead and get started here. There's a lot of stuff in this patch, so it's going to be a little bit of a longer video here. Uh, so the first thing, we'll just go through their patch notes on their blue post here. Uh, they had the Corrupted Zones, Oldham, and Vale of Eternal Blossoms. So what's going to happen here is in Pandaria and in Oldham, which is in Kalmador, which you probably know, uh, there's going to be uh, random, like, uh, basically like invasions uh, for Legion and assaults uh, for uh, before that. So there's going to be things that pop up on the map, it kind of is going to change the scenery of those zones. You're going to go there and complete those, and those are the corruption zones. There's like different encounters. There's only two zones that have it, but there's different encounters for each zone uh, that you can do there. We also have the new raid, Nihilotha, that's a 12 boss raid. Uh, we have the, uh, and just for clarification, the first week the raid isn't open yet, the second week normal heroic, third week mythic, and I believe first wing of Raid Finder, although I'm not positive on the Raid Finder there. The new Affix Awakened, this will not happen the first week, this will be the second week with Heroic and Normal Raid opening. Awakened is kind of a cool affix, I've done a video on it, and I'm sure uh, many other people have as well. Basically, there'll be like little points in the in the dungeon, and you and you have to do some of them or all of them, I can't remember exactly how that, uh, how many you have to do. But you have to go in, you go inside and you'll fight like a mini boss inside of, uh, into like another realm. And when you kill that mini boss, you'll be ported back out. So this allows you to do the big thing for this is it allows you to do skips. So while you're in that other realm, you can run past stuff. You can pull the boss to another area and kill him there. When you come out, maybe you don't have to fight nothing. Maybe you have an easy pull right when you come out. Uh, things like that. It allows you to basically skip parts of the dungeon. That's basically the whole point of it. Uh, assault the servants of Enzoth. So, a level 120 players will witness the overwhelming might of the old gods and firsthand a new assault. So I was kind of talking about those with the corrupted zones. Um, the, basically, there's not much to say other than what I already said about the zones. So, uh, here's the names of the assaults there's the Mantid Assault, Mogul Assault, Black Empire Assault. Those are all in Veil of Eternal. We also have the Amethyst Assault, the Akira Assault, and the Black Empire Assault in Oldham. Uh, horrific, horrific visions will be open, so this is the like the biggest thing here. So you're going to go into these horrific visions, and that's going to get you these mementos. You're going to be working on a legendary cloak, and uh, getting t getting stronger for the visions with these mementos, turning them into mother. Uh, it's called Titanic Research. So you'll turn the mementos into mother. They basically work like talents and you'll get stronger inside the vision so that way you can keep progressing more and more and being better and better at them, getting more and more, and then maxing out your cloak faster, basically. There's these faceless masks that become active. These basically decrease your sanity. If you've ever done Yogg Saron, there's a sanity debuff in there. Uh, I only use that as a reference because I still do that, it's just try to farm them out sometimes. Um, there's a sanity debuff in there. It's not like that really, but just think of along those lines. When you lose, when you go insane, you're 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 done. So these masks basically make you go insane faster, uh, but you get better rewards with these masks being active. I think there's five total masks. The new legendary cloak. I can't pronounce that for the life of, a life of for the life of me. I can't uh, pronounce life apparently. Azura Kamas. Azura. 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 Kamas, I don't know. Shot of Resolve, that's just your legendary cloak. It's what everyone will be wearing. Um, you can get up to, I think, level 15 on your cloak, uh, and then you can start getting resistance as well. Uh, new corrupted items and rewards. So there's corrupted gear, similar to Benthic gear, except it doesn't have like the cool affixes and stuff uh, plastered onto them. So uh, it's just a catch up gear in this case, not gear that's going to be mandated to wear for the raid. Uh, uh, so there's uh, different. Uh, corruption effects. I kind of already went, did a corruption video, so I won't spend too much long. Or I won't spend too long on these. There's ineffable truth. Spells and abilities have a chance to give you ineffable truth, uh, reducing cooldown recovery, uh, the rate of your cooldowns by 50%. Um, I'm not even going to go through all of them. There's a ton of them. Uh, Deep Wing Gorge redesign. That's a uh, an, uh, a PvP battleground uh, redesign. There uh, probably could use it. Uh, pet battles. The big thing here is a new pet battle dungeon for people like that. Black Rock Depths. That will be active. Uh, actually, these things are actually kind of interesting. I never really did one, but I did one just 
Oh, actually, by accident. I think I did two by accident, really. And they're actually not that bad. Uh, but you have to have pets that can do it. I don't really personally, but uh, they, it wasn't that. It was, it was actually a little bit fun. I'll just say that. Uh, new allied races will be active now. Volpari mechanomes, but you need to, you'll need to unlock them. I will do a video for the mechanome. I will not for Volpari, just because I am not. I do not have a horde character at max level. Uh, death knights for all. So now everybody can be a death knight. Pandas can be death knights, and the new allied races can be death knights, including mechanomes and Volpara. The auction house overhaul will be active. So this is a really big change. Uh, now we'll have this new auction house, the new system, the way it works, new interface. Uh, just a completely updated auction house to modern times. I did a video on that as well. If you'd like to look more into auction house, uh, this auction house overhaul. There are new quests. This is very mysterious. Uh, you know, many new stories and adventures are now available across Azeroth. But when they say across Azeroth, I just assume there's just new quests in the game. I don't know if there's new world quests that pop up in just random places or if there's just cool hidden quests in the game. Uh, either way, we'll see. And that, that sounds uh, promising. Um, they have a section saying the Dark Prince returns. That's Rathion. That's who you are working with to get your cloak and everything. Um, new heritage armor for goblins and worgen. Uh, that was something we've been waiting for a while. Uh, heroic Dark Shore. So Dark Shore can now be completed on heroic, which will give you better loot. I assume it'll be like heroic or normal raid loot for the Annihilator raid. Uh, there's a new brawl, a uh, PvP brawl called Teeming Islands. Just like an island thing, trying to make islands happen, <laughs> much like scenarios and. Pandaria. This is kind of cool, the Dark Moon Fair Arcade. So now when the Dark Moon Fair is in town, you'll be able to do uh, these like cool little games like Barrels of Fun, Hex Sweeper, Totemic Matrix, Remember, Rem Remember Barry, is probably what it's supposed to be referencing there, and Rune Matching. These are like the games that you did from like, uh, they were built by the Gnomish engineers like the uh, Kirin Tor type quests and like the Tortolan type quests where you do like kind of like more game type things. That's kind of cool. I'll probably check that out. There's all kinds of new mounts coming out. This is similar to uh, the last patch in Legion when all those mounts came out from dropping off of rares and stuff. Uh, holiday updates. Lunar Festival is getting an update. So that's pretty cool. Um, they they promised to update the, ho the holidays. Uh, character appearances, the Eyes of Blood Elves, Night Elves, and Death Knights all, ha all have an updated glowing effect. Guardian Druids with the Mage Tower artifact, so that's like the big hulking type bear looking thing, uh, will not have a dance animation. There are some class changes. I will just go over which classes have changes at all um, instead of trying to break down what they are. I mostly do this, I said at the beginning of the video, but I mostly do this just because uh, I don't, I'm not an expert in every class and every spec of every class, so I don't want to get anything wrong, which... Uh, would just lead to more problems than help. So, uh, Blood Death Knights and Holy Death Knights, uh, Balanced Druids, Feral Druids, Resto Druids, Frost Mages, Brewmaster Monks, Whist Mistweaver Monks, uh, Windwalker Monks, Holy Pallies, Glimmer of Light. I'll mention that just because I play Paladin. And and if there was retribution changes, I would go over those because that's what I am and that's what I kind of do guides on and stuff. Uh, priest, Disciplined Priest, Shadow Priest, Shaman, Elemental Shaman, Warlock, Affliction Warlocks. So those are the ones that have changes to them. Check them out if you didn't already know. Uh, again, now you can do that in the link below. Uh, dungeons and Raids, Mechagons now been split into two dungeons, upper and lower. I believe you could probably still run the original dungeon as the Mega Dungeon and try to get the mountain stuff. Um, but now you can run it as a, a Mythic Plus as well. So there'll be like an upper and a lower type section, except for it's called... Uh, they're called like workshop or what, junkyard or something like that. Um, so those will be the names of it instead of upper and lower. Now all there's all kinds of changes here that you might want to check out. I'm not going to go through each individual one. Basically everything's been nerfed a little bit because uh, when it gets to, to mythic, when you start adding pluses to it, it's going to be unkillable. King's Rest was nerfed quite a bit. You can look through those if you like. Uh, they go over a little bit about corrupted mementos, which I mentioned earlier. Those are what you're saving up. Uh, coalescing visions. So use coalescing, coalescing visions to purchase a variety of different items from Raytheon inside the Chamber of Heart, including new equipment, vessels of horrific visions. Those are the big thing. Those. So basically, you need these things to do the horrific visions. Is the biggest thing. Uh, Black Empire gear. That's the gear I was talking about. Um, they also mentioned that many legendary weapons are now transmogrifiable. So legendary weapons of the past, and um, I, I believe your. Uh, uh, I, I'm not sure if that means that you could transmogrify uh, a class weapon. I doubt it. I'm, I'm assuming they mean the old legendaries like Ragnar, like the 
Sulfur, Sulfur's Hand of Ragnaros and all that kind of stuff. Um, new illusion en uh, enchantments are available to collect. Uh, Rustbolt Insignia only provides reputation up to Exalted. You can no longer get Paragons with them. Uh, just very sim simple stuff like that. There's some Azerite gear changes. Overwhelming Power this is a big one. Fixed an issue causes Overwhelming Power to trigger more often based on your haste rating, which causes this trait to benefit more from haste than intended. So that's what they fixed there. So basically is it you know, glitched anymore. Heart of Azeroth. Players can now unlock a new minor slot at level 75. So if you're at max now, you're at 70. You can get up to 75. Uh, and there's periodic stamina increases up to level 80. Heart of Azeroth no longer has a maximum level. Uh, beyond level 80, you will still get the item level and slight stat increases on your neck. So you can continue to grind your neck out if you choose to, or just passively get it higher along the way. Completing Magni's quest chain to unlock the Heart Forge now starts your Azeroth at 50 up from 35. So when you first start up, when you first get to uh, 120 or 110, I don't even know when you get your necklace 110, I guess. Uh, bonus threat uh, from unlocking um, major and minor slots have been removed. Uh, essences, new essences. There's new essences. I won't go into each of them, uh, but there's Breath of Dying, Breath of Preservation, Touch of Everlasting. Uh, condensed life force damage debuff applied to your garden desert spikes has been reduced they just nerfed this because this is the previous raid essence that a lot of people used and they didn't want everybody using it purification protocol uh damage increase they can do that now because it's not uh <laughs> you know you're going to be used necessarily to glitch or to power through the old raid unbound force damage increased uh, vision of perfection proc rate increased by 12 percent. this is what i'm most excited to see uh, how that works out for ret uh, vitality, uh, vitality conduit, uh, now accurately displayed in combat log and scrolling combat attacks. So a lot of people weren't using that at all. Uh, world vein resonance, uh, rank one now additionally causes you to gain 300% bonus to primary stats gained from lifeblood shards. It's a major slot for 18 seconds. It was 50, 50% for 10 seconds. So it sounds like a pretty big buff there. Um, choo -choo 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 -choo. Player versus player. Seething Shore now has a 20 minute time limit. That's good. Uh, classes, that's player versus player. There is a, a PvP change to Unholy and to Shaman. Unholy Death Knight and to Shamans. Professions, uh, your professions are now, you won't have new stuff to do like new flasks, new potions, new enchants, uh, but you will have more new crafting gear. There is cooking, new cooking stuff that will affect you only inside the visions and stuff like that for the for the new stuff but it's not like imperative to do this uh stuff like it has been the past one past ones where you have to like get the new enchants get the new um new gems new everything new vanis runes of course all that kind of stuff uh, they fix some bugs with different things different class bugs and then just some old braid tweaks and everything like that so that's about it for it. it's a ton of patch notes it's a really big patch a lot to do not a lot to do but just stuff if you already play the game you know almost every day anyways then it's kind of a lot to do but if you don't play very much other than your raid or your pvp or whatever you do then uh then it then it uh might not feel uh, like too much more it'll just feel like you have something to do for a while so uh, that's it for this video please subscribe to my channel because that helps me out a lot and other than that everybody have a good one